Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ROG Asloth keyboard. Let's open it up and get right into the video. So first up, this is a very expensive keyboard. It costs $250 uh, new. Um, I think by the end of this review, we'll, I'll uh, have an opinion as to that price and whether I think it's worth it at the price or if you should wait till it goes on sale. Uh, Aurora Sync, a little LCD display, some features. I did select the brown switches. So it has clicky blue, tactile brown, and red linear. I just kind of arbitrarily prefer uh, tactile switches. So to each their own, so there's options for you. And so it has this outer box, and then it has this actually really nice looking inner box. Open it up, and uh, welcome to Game of Republic, or Republic of Gamers, I'm dyslexic. And uh, okay, oh that's, it's got some foam padding on the top, sorry my camera angle up here, there's foam padding. And then it's got this sleeve, um, feels fabric uh, protecting the keyboard, but let's uh, go through what's in the box first. Take that out. And let's see, then we got our manual with some stickers. Pretty sweet looking. In search of incredible art. Let's get that one out of the way. Okay, and inside this we have a very nicely braided uh, cable. It's USB C to USB A. Uh, let's see keycap puller, maybe a switch puller, what's this? Uh, I have no idea what that is offhand. Let's see, uh, looks like a receiver. What's that? I'm going to need to look at the manual. Oh, that's cool. This must be um, more lube for the uh, mechanical switches. Uh, just not something I was expecting at all. And it looks like it has some extra rubber for its feet. And it comes with a little brush to apply more lube. I'm sorry, that just sounds really, seems really funny to say over and over again. And it comes with some extra switches. Right there. Well, now that we've gone through that, let's open up the keyboard. And just take a quick look-see over it. So again, this cloth is, feels pretty nice and should protect the keyboard fairly well. This is a very hefty keyboard, um, very heavy feeling. It is wireless, so it has an internal battery, which is one of the reasons why it's so heavy. So that's what this is for. It's to plug in like that. No, I think I got it right. Oh, that is very tight feeling and what I do with the cable so then you plug in the USB-C to that side and plug it in of course oh that is also USB-A so you can just plug this directly into your desktop laptop it all depends on where your ports are located for uh, range of the signal so that was literally just a holder so there's no USB port that just uh, it's right there to Oh, that's magnetic. That's pretty cool. You can hear that. Um, let's see. There's a USB-C port to plug it into your computer directly. And over here, I'm not sure if that'll show up. We have Bluetooth mode. We have, I guess, receiver mode and then wired mode. Oh, we got it turned on. Oh, that side is all the way off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, while we play around with it. I think I actually just got them backwards. So it's Bluetooth, receiver, and wired in the middle. So I'm going to leave it on wired to save the battery until I actually uh, test everything out. Well, the key presses feel pretty good. The switches are listed as uh, ROG NX Browns. So, um... I'm not sure how they compare right right off the bat, just while I'm sitting here, to uh, MX. 
but they feel okay. Well, let's walk around the keyboard while I am here. So other than this heft, it has the standard keys. I will say without any backlighting, the um, letters and numbers are fairly hard to see on the keyboard. Uh, the back of it is pretty cool looking. So it's got rubber feet there, low level, a uh, little bit of rubber there, some pretty good rubber on the front. And then it's got the high, again, same sort of thing. Uh, tiny little peel right there. And we got the ROG logo. Uh, what else about this keyboard? Well, before we uh, get into testing, it, let's uh, pull off a keycap just to take a look. Mm. Okay, it is a double shot keycap. I'm sure that was on the packaging. Yep, PBT double shot. But you can clearly tell that based on the back right here. The fact that it has this inner and outer bits of it for the shine through. And then you'd have your keycap puller. You would get it nicely in there. And you pull it out. That was very smooth uh, retrieval, actually. And it looks like this is a north facing LED. I know some people have a preference. Uh, I would say I don't at this point. I'm not a real mechanical keyboard uh, connoisseur. So I only really have one right now. If you've watched at any and or any of my videos, I've been looking for a secondary uh, keyboard. So uh, I'm taking a look at this one. Let's uh, take a look at stabilization. A little bit of wiggle actually feels feels pretty good. Uh, let's take a listen to how this keys sound. Hi, my name is Bill. Well, hopefully that uh, got you some input as to how the keys sound on the uh, brown switches. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and do a little typing testing and gaming test. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to do the typing test. I'm going to have the microphone put at the keyboard. I apologize. I'm at a weird angle and my camera is facing the screen so you can see what I'm typing. Um, I may talk out loud. I'm a little bit dyslexic, so I've got a camera in my way and I'm at a weird angle from the screen. So typing speed is not my full typing speed. I'm also not a super fast typer, but uh, get the general feel for it. Um, anything else I want to say? So I'm going to give it my best go and tell you how I think. And again, I apologize if you hear me talking out loud while I read what's on the screen and typing. Okay, pretty good typing speed, uh, a lot of mistypes, but more or less within my average typing felt uh, okay. Um, okay. One of the first things to note about this keyboard is it does use Armor Crate. It is an Asus product, ROG. So you want to go to devices and I clicked on that. Well, it's making me check for updates. So check for updates, update center, and then go ahead and update your stuff. Whether or not you like Armory Kate is up to you, and that might be a deal breaker for you for this keyboard. But since I have an Asus motherboard in my desktop, it, I already have it installed 
for controlling lighting and stuff. So it's a non-extra piece of software for me, but if you're not using an Asus motherboard or you don't have Armor Crate installed, then this may not be the keyboard for you just right off the bat. Okay, so this is my first time taking a look at uh, the keyboard software. So you see the uh, ROG As Asoth right there in the corner. So you know which keyboard you're taking a look at. And let's see, basic effects on, basic effects off. Let's see, then you have the different options. Uh, I guess Aurora Sync would be, ah, linked to whatever the keyboard is, or you have it set up uh, like with your desktop or your laptop, whatever you're using. Um, I'm going to set up a static one, I guess. All right, off camera, I had to install another piece of software. I had to install this Aura Creator. Uh, walking through, okay, very good. Let's keep going. Become a creator, let's get started. Uh, that's the laptop. So, okay, I'm, I'm learning the software while on camera. So, up in here, available devices, and it shows you what devices you have available. Select your keyboard, okay. And then it should appear. Uh, sorry for the wiggle. Okay, on the side here, you can have it sync with music uh smart adaptive color so that should be based on your screen and i pretty much unanimously just prefer static i'm gonna come back to keyboard control because I uh, or lighting control because i need to research that so i'm gonna move on and then i'll come back to it uh control knob so it can be volume media track uh keyboard brightness oled adjustment uh, switch lighting effects and customizable so you can choose what kind of features you want under customizable you can choose from I guess a whole bunch of different options I'm gonna just leave it as volume control for the time being in the OLED screen uh, music mode ah so it'll just create little graphs that looks kind of cool system information battery uh, hardware information, dual hardware information, ah, CPU frequency, GPU frequency, okay. Uh, customize the bar, let's see, what else is in here? Again, I'm learning this all at the same time as you while I'm actually doing this video. Uh, customize animation so you can create your own. I'm going to uh, put it as dual hardware frequency voltage. I'm going to put that as GPU. I think that's cool. Uh, okay. And then power. So it has how much battery it has, battery for notifications when it's at a low power level. Um, so sleep mode. Okay. And for more updates, you can check for updates there. Uh, the different keys. So in here, you can select a key and um, change it. You can make it a function, mouse function. Uh, I don't know why you do that, but you can. Uh, looks like you would also be able to change the letters. So you could rearrange the keyboard to have the letters be whatever format you like because there is a standard keyboard format and then there are other ones. So you can choose which ones you just kind of prefer and go with that one. So a bit of head scratching later, I finally figured out how to set it up. So first and foremost, if you hit shift, you can select multiple keys at once, okay? So then what you do is you click right here and say, set layer. So I already have something applied there. I'm gonna uh, change the escape key, I guess, and go set layer. Well, it created a new layer right here, and then you can choose what effect you like. I prefer static stuff so i can select static and uh, you can have it be at different times it'll change colors or you can have a gradient over here or how, do, how does that even look um oh that didn't really look that impressive uh anyways uh set to static color and um or whatever effect you like 
for that particular key or set of keys, and it will save to uh, the keyboard. If you don't like it, you can delete or you can delete the effect. So I'm going to delete this effect and I'm going to delete that one. Um, so as I click on these layers, you can see which ones I have selected. So I messed up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do edit. And can I unclick that? Yes. I held down control and I unclicked my A for WASD. And then I just go up here and hit save. Save and apply. And my keyboard has automatically changed colors. Um, so again, you know, you click over here, you click edit layer and it shows you what is on that layer. When you're done, just save, save and apply, and it reapplies everything on that layer. Well, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if it's really just this complicated, but uh, it shouldn't be this complicated in my opinion. So after I set up all the keys and I exited the uh, Aurora, uh, Aurora Creator and went back into Armory Crate, all the lighting here reset itself. Um, back to like Aurora Sync, which is just my standard purple color, which is what I like. Um, but when I open up Aurora Sync again, it uh, and hit save, it reapplied it. So I'm a little confused by that, but this is the way the lighting effect looks. I think it looks pretty good. As a quick note, I have just plugged this keyboard into my second computer. And you'll notice that all that pretty lighting is now gone. So that means that this keyboard does not have onboard memory to save your profiles. So continuing my uh, note about this keyboard. So I just plugged it back into my other computer and I had to open up Aurora Creator again and all my lighting effects came back. Um, in my opinion, at this price point of 200 and was it $50, $80? I don't remember right now. It should have onboard memory to remember what lighting effect you set up on your keyboard. So that is a huge red mark. Now that being said, um, it kind of should be okay, but if, especially if you're only using it on one computer, but still it, it, it just should remember so that, you know, you unplug it, you plug it back in. It makes me doubt whether it's going to remember at restart which means you would have to reopen um, Aurora Sync just to get your lighting effects. Um, that, that is kind of what I'm thinking that you would have to do. That, that would be a huge annoyance, especially at this price point. Everything comes down to the price point. Before I forget, you are able to um, import your save file for Aurora Sync to another computer, so it's not the end of the world, but it is pretty annoying the fact that you have to reload it every time or transfer it to another computer it just doesn't save on the device. As per kind of my usual in these videos, I like to compare the keyboard against, well, one that I have been using, and that is the drop uh, shift. And, um, you know, there you go, there's the size comparison. So you'll be getting uh, that much extra space around your desk. And as for the lighting effects, well, my monitor is currently on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. There, that should help. So the darker keys help make the lights seem brighter. Uh, in terms of how much light bleed is happening kind of around the keys, I would say that they look similar. Uh, whether losing the keypad is a video breaker for you is kind of up to you. Um, I will say I like the darker keys, but without any backlighting on, they're basically next to impossible to read, but that is also a, uh, pretty similar with the drop shift. You can't even uh, really see the keys without it being plugged in, but that's fine. It's RGB. It looks, it looks great. Um, what else? Let's go over the uh, little OLED screen. So if I push in on the side, Lighting effects, adjust volume, multimedia, uh, but note it resets itself pretty quickly. You can click down and up. Oh, lighting effects, breathe. So you can cycle through those 
adjust volume, up, down, cycle again, multimedia, previous track, next track. So uh, parsing in on this adjusts what functionality you can do temporarily before the screen goes back to displaying whatever it was going to display. Um, back to color appearance, I think that it's uh, probably functionally equivalent to my uh, drop shift keyboard. Um, for its price, I'm having a harder time justifying that price. Um, at how much? Under 200. I would start saying that this is a great option. Um, but at its current price, it's a little steep. Just want to kind of go over the keyboard a little bit more. So it's got secondary print uh, screens printed on it for like print screen right there, uh, default. Um, it's got some Roman numerals, one through five. Uh, I really like the fact that it has that printed on it. I'm not a huge fan of keyboards that don't have the secondary functions printed on it. So it lets you know what you're going to get into when you press F in and that key, rather than just memorizing it. I mean, at some point you're gonna memorize it, right? But um, right off the bat, you're not gonna have it all memorized, so it's good for them to be there. And for those who are uh, not like field typers, I guess, um, it's, it's good to have that kind of feature on it. All right, I'm in game. My game of choice is Black Mesa. Uh, I'm just kind of running around, getting a feel for this keyboard. Boom! Uh, we need a... Oh, wow. This is not going very well. So key presses are actually... Well, um, getting quite a bit of noise from just uh, the thunk of pressing down. So... I guess that's just a matter of opinion right there. Uh, keyboard responsiveness feels pretty good. I walked right into that head crab, or not head crab, uh, bronco. Do, do, do. I am using it uh, wired mode right now. Well, let's go ahead and switch it to wireless. Okay, that was completely seamless. So I literally just plugged in the, the controller and switch it over to um, wireless receiver mode and uh, lighting effects are all there well it's 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 just one color but um, it gets all the uh, applicable information on the little OLED screen and um, well let's see how it feels pretty responsive Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I love the shotgun. Okay, they're down there. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to wired. Make sure you switch it over to wired mode, otherwise it's not going to do anything. I notice no meaningful difference. But then again, I'm not pro, so I think either way you're going to be pretty happy with it. I'm about to, to die in the game, so yeah. There we go. Uh, so what do I think about the keyboard? Well, it feels responsive no matter what. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, the the price the price is the big part. So the biggest problem is definitely the price at two hundred and fifty dollars. It's just it doesn't seem like a good deal for what you're getting. Um, so I think it's a great keyboard. I certainly think the functionality of it is very good. The response is very good. The keys feel pretty good. Um, 
So I have my other keyboard. This one's a bit quieter. This one sounds hollow. This one doesn't sound as hollow, but it sounds higher pitched. Um, up to you whether that matters. Um, responsiveness feels about equal. Uh, really, it's are functionally equivalent. I, I see very little difference in using the the two keyboards. Um, again, the biggest problem is the price. If the, the you find the price acceptable, then this might be a great option for you. If you don't find the price acceptable, this may not be a good option for you. Um, I think it's I think it's fine. Uh, definitely one of the better keyboards that I've actually taken a, taken a look at. It's a 75% keyboard. I don't think I mentioned that at all in my review, and I I'm, I'm liking I'm liking it a lot, just not the price. I think that's really what my review is. Um, so yeah, quick roundup. This needs onboard memory, so that no matter what computer you plug it into, it will remember your settings. That's one for its price. Uh, two, the price needs to come down probably at least 50 bucks. Then it'd be 200. Uh, ideally, I think that this is more like a 160, 70 dollar keyboard. Although it's got a battery in it, so I guess 200 might make sense. So that functionality, because the battery adds quite a bit of cost with the wireless receiver, blah 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 blah. Uh, response time feels good. Uh, the lighting effects, when they're functioning properly, it, they look fantastic. Figuring out the software was annoying. Other companies have much easier to use software like Steel Series. Um, comparing this to the Steel Series I tested out a couple months ago, um, I think I like the Steel Series ones a little bit better, especially the Steel Series Pro. But um, certainly, it's a good keyboard if you want the wireless option. This and a 75% keyboard, this is a good option. I like the screen printing, the key press feel, and it's got uh, uh, tactile switches. But the price, in my opinion, just needs to come down. Personally, I don't really care about the OLED screen. I'm, I'm not gonna monitor my computer temperatures. I'd rather just have a knob or something. So this is extra cost. That doesn't really do anything for me personally. Um, but yeah, that's... I think that's all I got to say about this keyboard. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.